Welcome to the Nukipedia Pipcast by Junk Radio for the end of December and the end of 2022. Happy New Year! This episode we're going to open with LS's Creech feature taking a look at Nick Valentine, and then in the mod squad I'll be interviewing Fallout New Vegas modder Stealth Dick, who you may know from the Transporters mod, Doris the Ninja, and so much more. So please stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to the Fallout Creature Feature, where we take a look at some of the most notable animals, monsters, and strange beings that inhabit the wasteland. I'm LS, and today we're going to end the Fallout series' 25th anniversary by looking at one of the series' most beloved companions. We're looking at every player's favorite synth companion, the one and only Nick Valentine. Nick has become a popular and critical favorite in the Fallout fandom, but what actually is his story? Let's find out. Nick is the only detective in his small office operating in Diamond City, alongside his loyal assistant Ellie Perkins. Before finding himself in the Jewel of the Commonwealth, Nick had been the creation of the Institute. Nick believes he is a prototype between the second generation and current model of synths. Along with the synth Dima, the synth that became Nick was created as an experiment by the Institute to test if and how synths could manage independent thought. The synth that became Nick was subject to years of experimentation, with numerous memories of various humans uploaded into his mind. Despite all this, he and Dima formed a brotherly bond with one another, because they were the only two of their kind. Eventually, Dima, who was created to develop a sense of consciousness without the memory and personality uploads, grew to resent the experiments being performed on him and his brother. Dima and his brother managed to escape, but not before the Institute uploaded a new personality, that of a pre-war police detective, into Dima's brother. The synth, now identifying himself as Nick Valentine, suddenly woke up in a state of confusion and attacked Dima. Dima, having no choice, was forced to retaliate and knock Nick unconscious. After regaining consciousness, Nick found himself in a garbage pile an unknown amount of time later. Nick became a wanderer, traveling the wastes in a state of confusion for weeks on end. Most wastelanders regarded Nick with both fear and awe because of his appearance. Nick made his way to a small community where the children, led by a youngster called Jim, treated him with respect and not as a monster. Nick eventually left the settlement, but sadly years later, he returned to find it had been destroyed by raiders. Eventually, Nick came across Diamond City. Despite the city's disdain for the Institute and synths, Nick quickly gained the respect of the community by saving former Mayor Henry Roberts' daughter when she was kidnapped and taken hostage by a group of traitors. Nick claimed he had an explosive inside him when he accidentally came across the traitors and the girl. Roberts gave Nick a house in Diamond City as compensation, despite initial skepticism by the community. But gradually, Nick eliminated the fears of the citizenry with his mechanical skills and detective abilities. Eventually, it became clear that Nick's mechanical skills were no longer needed by the citizenry, as he had discovered his destiny as Diamond City's greatest investigator. By the time the sole survivor comes across him while he's deep in the middle of his investigation of Skinny Malone and Vault 114, Nick has established himself as the greatest detective in the Commonwealth. Like I said in the introduction, Nick has become a fan favorite, and it's easy to see the appeal. I love every part of this guy, from his amazing detective outfit to his Humphrey Bogart-inspired voice. He's a true blue friend, and the Wasteland is a far better place because he's in it. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Fallout Creature Feature. For the Nukipedia Pipcast, I'm L.S. So joining me this week on the Mod Squad is Stealth Dick. Stealth Dick is a mod creator for Fallout New Vegas, who has created some very significant mods, and he joins us now. How are you doing there, Stealth? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Great. Well, the first question I ask everybody I interview, what was your first Fallout moment? How did you get into the series? So my first Fallout moment was I was in the fourth grade and my dad had gotten me Fallout 3 for Christmas. And prior to that, I barely heard of the game at all. And I think maybe even before I even got to play, he was telling me that his coworkers told him about the game. And they're like, he was telling me about like the Oasis. He wasn't really sure what he was talking about. But I really liked the game because it was like my first ever act RPG. I mean, I didn't even play Oblivion up until that point. And I mean, what, what really drew me in, I mean, I was like 
I was like nine years old. You could kill anyone you wanted, you know, you could like steal, you could just do a bunch of horrible things. You know, I go to Megaton, blow up the town. I mean, it was really cool. I replayed that game so many times, but yeah, that was my entrance into the other series. Awesome. And did that lead you getting into modding or did you come into modding from a different angle? So what got me into modding, I remember I got a little older when I started watching YouTube and I didn't know modding was a thing. In fact, I was misled a lot. I'd be like looking up like, you know, houses from Fallout 3 and I see these like modded crazy houses where, you know, it's like totally not in the game, but I'm just too young to really realize that. And I'm actually looking up to go where they are, but they are like non-existent. That's how I realized the modding was a thing. But what got me into modding, you know who Al Chess Breach is? I have heard of Al Chess Breach, yes. Modding wasn't on my radar whatsoever. Fall of New Vegas came out and I pre-ordered it. I got it day one. And when I started watching YouTube videos on it a bit after playing, I found Al Chess Breach and he'd do these modded playthroughs of people's mods, like the Some Guy series and a bunch of the other notable mods as well. And it really made me want to, one, get a PC because I was playing Xbox at the time, and two, mod because that's the only way you could make mods or download mods. And that's really what drew me in. Awesome. Did, did you have a programming background or is that something that developed afterwards? I got into modding maybe like five years after New Vegas came out. And before I got into modding, I took like a little Unity class in my middle school. I did a little bit of JavaScript or HTML in high school, but really it's kind of funny. I get most of like my bare bones knowledge on modding from using the GEC itself. If I could say anything was my entrance into programming, it would be, I'm not crazy at programming whatsoever. I mean, when it comes to GEC, that's definitely what I'm most confident with, though it did take me a while to get into some of the other types of uh, script extenders like NBSE and whatnot. So one of your mods is Doris the Ninja. Can you tell us a bit more about Doris and how you came up with the idea? Yeah, Doris spawned from me wanting to make another companion. If you were to look at my Nexus profile, you'd see the he's the only companion on there. I've made a few more in the past. I want to say really just one. I had an old Nexus mods account that was banned because I wasn't very nice, but I was very young. I've changed a lot since then, but doors stemmed from me trying to just make a bare bones companion. And I thought it would be really cool to just have a companion with like throwing weapons. And I made him, I mean, many years prior. I mean, I, I sat him down, made a little cell for the El Rey motel, and I just had him in there between then and when I actually released the more updated version of doors, I had been working on a really, really big mod. There's a, there's a large gap in my mod publishing because I was working on this mod that demanded a lot of time and I was a sole person working on it. It was meant to be very small, but it ended up mutating and growing until I had this thing in my hands that I want to say is in terms of size, it's the size of like Honest Hearts or World War Blues or something like that. And I wasn't even finished with it and it just became too demanding and I needed a break from working on it. I mean, I'm done working on it now, you know, I'm not going to touch it again, but I need a break from working on it. And I went back to something I started prior, which was Doris. And when I came back to him, he was just this shirtless dude sitting in a motel and he just had throwing knives and I decided to develop him and I'd try to make him a bit cooler. He just uses throwing knives and I made him his own custom Wakatashi. I was trying to think of who or why it'd even be viable. And I was like, oh, he's part of the Yakuza. I just kind of came up with a backstory for him and I, I really ended up liking it. So that's awesome. Almost 13,000 players have tried out the Transporters mod. Can you tell us what it is and where the idea came from? Yeah. So with Transporters, it's a fast travel alternative. I came up with the idea a while ago, like around the same time frame that I came up with Doris before I took on my much larger project. And it all stemmed from concept art I saw for Fallout 3, which had a, a wastelander or a slave or somebody traveling on the back of a giant mole rat. And there's like people in chains following behind the mole rat and whatnot. But the idea was there's these giant mole rats and there's people riding them as transportation. And after seeing that, I thought of how cool it'd be to have a fast travel service. I, I also took creative ideals from the Skyrim carriage system as well. I just like that there's this faction of people with the ability to take people and the players from one end of the game world to the other. And another big reason why I chose mole rats is because you can't really ride a Brahmin. At first, it was going to be people leading Brahmins and maybe like a carriage drawn system, but I mean, realistically, ideally that'd just be way too slow. 
I was really settled on mole rats at that. But when I wanted to first take on the transporters, like when I wanted to first start it, I didn't have a lot of experience with New Vegas's more advanced scripting. And I'm happy I decided to take time to make transporters because I learned more about coding and scripting and I was able to make something out of it. I think to date, it is one of my most favorite mods I've worked on. It actually would have been published a lot sooner but just getting people to do voice acting it can get a bit hard at times trying to work up people's schedules but i think what makes transporters my favorite is the time i spent with my friends actually voicing the characters it sounds like it was really a labor of love there and i love the idea of making something thematic that actually makes fast travel work yeah I know that a lot of people were liking it. It's actually been uploaded twice because the first time around, I think there's some, and there were people complaining that it took up too much space in their load order if they decided to use like all the different plugins. So then I had to make a remastered merged version and they added a bunch of other stuff to make the whole fast travel experience even more seamless. Awesome. Now you have teased a, a larger project. Is there anything that you can tell us about that or anything else you're working on at the moment? Yeah. I originally made a tiny mod. It wasn't going to be a joke, but I'm pretty sure I read this on Nukipedia. The jet is what? It, it's like Brahmin poop in a inhaler? Yeah, the fumes specifically. Yes, the fumes. And I wanted to make a mod where you could go around and make it yourself. I, I had a mod where the Brahmins would poop. And at the time, I didn't have any skills with Blender, so I just... Like one of the ant eggs from Fallout, so they're very spherical. And I put like a poop texture on it. Every X amount of seconds, if you're near them, they would poop these eggs out. But you couldn't you could go up and pick them up with your bare hands. I mean, it's where you have to take a shovel to them. And, you know, you'd get poop. And you'd also have to have buckets on you. And then you'd have to like fill the buckets up. And depending on how full the bucket was, you could take it to a campfire. And if you had jet inhalers with you as well empty ones you can make jet and i took that and that was fully functional and i was like what other drugs can i make and then going through the files i found the remnants of fallout 3's slavery system okay. the, like the whole like paradise paradise falls thing the factions were still there the effects were still there but they didn't have scripts anymore but the names were all there and i decided hey you know no one's really made a, a slavery mod for fall new vegas one that's akin to Fallout 3 slavery. I also thought that was like a really cool aspect of the game, just because really you could do anything in the game. You don't like this person, you sell them, you know, sure. So I decided to remake that. And it was small at first. And then I decided to make a big branching quest line off of it. And I made this entire faction called the Manhunters, who were heavily trained. The NCR are scared of them. Legion, don't, you know, is their biggest competitors because they just moved into the Mojave. And I ended up making an entire world space for them that's set in this, like, alpine area. And they have this giant base of operations called the Bazaar. And inside, there's a bunch of shops and stalls everywhere. There's an elevator that goes down, and you can see slaves fight in there. And you can wage on them, uh, Fighter 1 and Fighter 2. And you could join the slavers, and they had their own quest line. Or very early on, you could choose to join the Resistance which would make the player have to kind of be a scout and be involved in recon and sabotage and stuff like that, like sabotaging the ordnance room right next to the arena and just destroying the whole bottom level. It spanned into something crazy. I sat down and did the little playthrough of what I had in front of my friend, and this was me speedrunning it, because if you're a player, you're going to be taking more time. But since I know where everything is because I made it, I was speedrunning it for my friend. It took me 30 minutes to speedrun to get to my halfway point that I had made. and. I, it became this giant task for me to continue working on because it was just so that the scape of it was huge mm -hmm. and it was too much for one person to take on. And I decided that I needed to take a break from it. And so that's when I decided to go in and start working on the, the mods that I've published. So orders, that was the first one where I was like, I need to take a break. I've had this mole rat idea for a long time now. I want to do it. And then. Same with my fatigue overhaul too. After that, I was like, this is another thing that I feel like I could expand on and make better. And so I, I worked on that. But will I will I ever go back to my original mod? I, I didn't really have a name for it. I think I could call it the Crimson Chains or something like that. Really not. Because right now, I've decided to go through and redo the whole 
slavery and fallout new vegas idea so i rebuilt it from the ground up and i've made a lot of good strides on it thus far it's not growing past what it should in fact it it feels really good at this point and it feels like it adds another layer that the player can choose to abide by if that makes any sense another way to play to new vegas awesome so with all that in mind is is there something in particular about fallout new vegas that makes you interested in modding it rather than the other games i think it's i think it is a bit of a flavor of love you know i i have a lot of passion for for fall at new vegas when fallout 4 was coming out i wanted to make the switch i was actually really excited to make the switch but i i was so excited for the game i even took four days off of school to play through the whole thing but i just wasn't the biggest fan of it and it was primarily because of the dialogue system and for my modding at the time, I liked, I was making a lot of West mods, which probably won't ever see daylight, but I wasn't a fan of the dialogue and it kind of just okay. kept me working. It, it kept me in New Vegas. So I just never made the jump to any of the more modern titles. I also like New Vegas' modding system. Maybe it's because I'm comfortable with the language. I'm comfortable with using the program. I can certainly understand the comfort factor there. So if someone wanted to follow you and make sure that they were the first to know about this new slavery mod, what's the best place to follow you? I would say my, my Twitter, which is Stealth Dick. My Nexus name is Stealth Dick, but uh, that was sadly taken on Twitter. So it's just Stealth Dick without the H in. That's where you'd find me. And I, I'm not a frequent poster. In fact, I have recently moved to Japan, so I've been modding a little less. I, I still do it in whatever free time I have. That's really the best place to keep updated. I post on there every now and then about my modding or other modding-esque things. Great. So that we're, I'm really looking forward to seeing that there, Stealth. Make sure you are following him on all the socials. And thanks very much for joining us today. Of course. Thank you. <laughs>